Thank you for coming by and watching this video. If you enjoy this video or feel you've benefited from it, consider going to patreon.com forward slash newbiehack and support these efforts. You'll have access to 20 of my latest videos that hasn't been published on YouTube yet. Okay, we're back. And there are a couple of things that I still want to do with the program before we get into the actual looking at the LCD and looking at the timings and seeing what we need to do with the enable, read, write, and register select and the data pins. And that is, we haven't really done anything with the reset clock and control register and making this automatic. Currently, we have to manually enable the GPIO B and the GPIO C ports. But what if we use another port? You know, we can, if we just do, if we just use these two lines here and only enabling B and C, we can only use B and C in these defines. You've probably already noticed that in this programming and you're probably thinking, why did he forget this portion of it? And I didn't, and I, I think this is kind of the next step to take a look at and see what we can do to enable any GPIO that we want and only the ones that we want because if we're not using C, we don't want to enable it automatically because we may use port C for something completely different. We might use it for I squared C or UART or something else, some other kind of communication or maybe even timing or, or interrupts. So let's take a look and see how we can make this more automatic as, as a part of the LCD header file, which we haven't made yet and we will probably make very shortly, if not in this vid video itself. And I'm also gonna introduce an idea to myself that I'm gonna try to do the experimentation of this in the video and as a part of this video production Generally, I will do the experimentation prior to creating the video, but I think there's a lot to be learned in my process in the experimentation. And if I fail, then you'll see why. So let's see what happens. The idea that comes to mind to use, to figure out how to determine the, the GPIO according to this address or this designation is to put it directly into this portion or this this function because what we're doing is we're specifying the port here and it could be any port so we can put a, a condition if port this particular port is equal to say gpio b then we we invoke this particular one. So we're going to have to do this for each port. So let's go ahead and try to do that. I'm going to go ahead and do a copy and paste. And I want to do it at the beginning because I want to make sure that I'm setting the reset clock and control register before I actually change the output state or the state of the, the port itself. But I also want to do another thing. Let's, let's, let's start putting the condition in first. Let's say if port is equal to let's see GP IO a so let's do that first let's give some space here then I'm gonna to want to put that the a here but I think I also want to figure out if it's already done if it's already set Although actually I'm not really sure that's necessary. I don't, it doesn't hurt anything to actually just set it because we need it set anyway and we can do it every single time. Even though it's already been set, we can set it again or just make sure that there's a one here, which is what we're doing anyway. So let's do this for each port. We'll do that for B. We'll do it for C. and D, E, and F. 
And if your controller has more ports, then I would add more here. Let's actually see. Let's actually see how many ports there are on this particular one. Okay, so it looks like there's A, B, C, D, and F. There's no E. So I'm not going to be able to, to do this E here. Yeah, see, it doesn't... I put the E inside that to change it, and the options it gives me is all of them. So it's telling me that there is no GPIO E, so pick from any of these. Because it that's the closest match. So I'm going to use the F. And with this change, we can we should be able to remove it here. So I'm just going to put some comments here just in case we still need it. And now what I want to do is put this into a function because I want the the actual main to be very minimal and only calling certain functions to initialize the the ports and to actually send the characters. So let's make another one here. I'm going to call it initialize ports for LCD because I want to this is going to be under the LCD header file and if we have to initialize other ports for other other services or features then we can name it for that. So there is not going to be anything passed in, so we'll just leave that blank. And then we're just going to take this and move it up. And we want to initialize the ports here. Okay. All right, let's see if this experiment works. I'm going to just do a quick build just to see if we have any errors. It looks like we have an error. GPIO E is undeclared. Ah, you see, that's, we know we have, we don't have a GPIO E and that's exactly what I thought. And we actually didn't change it here. So let's just change this to an F and we should be okay. Let's try it again. So it looks like our build is okay. Just because we have a good build doesn't actually mean that it's gonna work in the program. So we want to take the changes that we've made and try it out and see if we get the same output from the LEDs, which actually still doesn't mean that we've done everything right. But as we go along in the tutorial, we'll see if we get any other errors along the way. So you can see what we had in the beginning is the letter C. So let's go ahead and flash it and see what we get. Let's take a look at the program again and see where this is where we're having the problem. And I see it right here. We're putting it in the wrong function. The function we're putting it in is where we send the bit to the respective pin and port, port and pin. That's not where we want to put it. We want to put it where we're doing the initialization of the port itself. So we're going to cut it and move it into the set port and pin for output. I can't believe I missed that. But I think I know why. And I generally put initialization stuff at the top and I put other functions below the initialization. So in my habit, I looked at the very top and I saw something with a port in it and I put it in that location not a good idea. So I need to be more careful in, in, in looking at where I put certain parts of my code. Let's go ahead and try it again. Let's see if it, let's see if it builds first. It looks like it's build, it build correctly. And I'm going to flash the microcontroller again. See what happens. Okay, I'm gonna plug it in. See, there's no output. 
So I'm gonna flash them my controller and it looks like it works. So that's good news. So it looks like we were writing the, the correct code. We were just putting it in the wrong location. This could actually cause quite a lot of time and effort in debugging. And I stopped the video for a while and I was looking at this thing for a long period of time, trying to find out why this wasn't working. And it was that simple putting this code in just the wrong location. So that is a good lesson. Now we have that out of the way. We have everything that it takes to make this LCD send a particular character to the data pins. And we have put all of the code for initialization of the port in a nice compact location in inside of some functions. And if you look at the program, we don't have much in the main anymore. We have very little. We can actually take all of this stuff out right here. And you can see how small our main code is. We have pretty much everything in the above the main and we can take all this stuff out. We don't need this in this program at all because we're gonna make a header file for the LCD. So let's go ahead and do that.